we remember the fire. We remember the colossal tower of the Saturn V rising from the flame trench, a deliberate act of defiance against gravity and impossibility. It was a machine of sheer, staggering power. The first stage, the S1C, with its five F1 engines, was the fist that drove us off the pad, generating nearly 34 meganewtons, 7.6 million pounds of thrust. The second stage, the S2, was the elegant burn that carried us into orbit. They were the muscle. They were the raw fury. But the success, the true genius, the subtle and precise execution of the journey to the moon did not belong to them. It belonged to the smallest, lightest, and most critical piece of that 100-meter stack, the S-4B. The S-4B wasn't just another stage, it was the linchpin. It was the upper stage tug that pushed Apollo out of Earth orbit, and later, it became a deliberate scientific instrument, an impactor that turned discarded hardware into a tool for discovery. Powered by a single, restartable J2 engine, the S-4B had two lives to live. First, to carry astronauts toward the moon. Second, to deliver a calculated seismic shock to its surface. In that duality, lies one of the most brilliant yet underappreciated feats of Apollo engineering. For an audience already familiar with Saturn V hardware, let's peel back the layers. Let's move beyond the drama of liftoff and focus on the unforgiving mechanical ballet that unfolded 185 kilometers above the Earth, a ballet in which one stage had to execute not just propulsion, but also precise maneuvers, delicate separations, and finally, a purposeful destiny as an instrument of science. The S-4B's design was radical for its time. Unlike the five engine clusters of the stages below it, it was powered by a single, mighty J-2 engine. This was a decisive design choice, cutting weight and complexity while making upper stage restarts possible. The J-2 was a breakthrough. It was one of the first large engines to burn liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen together using a gas generator cycle. Producing just over one mega newton, 232,000 pounds of thrust, it was far less powerful than the F1, but far more efficient in the vacuum, with a specific impulse of about 421 seconds. The S-4B's first duty was to ignite after S-2 separation, burning for about 2.5 minutes to lift Apollo into a circular Earth parking orbit at roughly 185 kilometers altitude, traveling at 7.8 kilometers per second. This orbit provided a two-hour pause, a breathing space where mission control could check every onboard system. The instrument unit, the six-foot guidance ring atop the S-4B, managed precise navigation and avionics, ensuring every trajectory was within tolerances. Then came the crescendo the Translunar Injection, or TLI. For this, the J-2 engine had to restart, a demanding feat in the wakeless, chilling void of orbit, and burn for about 5 minutes and 40 seconds. The goal, to raise the spacecraft's velocity from orbital speed to about 6.7 miles per second, or 10.8 kilometers per second, 
enough to place Apollo on a free return trajectory around the moon. Precision was everything. A velocity error of less than three feet per second, or one meter per second, could translate into thousands of miles off course by the time the spacecraft reached lunar distance. The S-4B stage poured over 113,000 gallons, or 430,000 liters, of super-cold propellant into this single maneuver. And when the engine shut down, the crew was committed. They were on their way to the moon. The S-4B had delivered. When TLI ended, the Apollo stack was still attached to the stage. The lunar module, LM, sat nestled inside the Spacecraft Lunar Module Adapter, or SLA. To continue the mission, it had to be extracted. This called for the transposition, docking, and extraction maneuver, the most delicate ballet of Apollo, performed by the astronauts themselves. First, explosive bolts cut the command and service module loose. Small rockets nudged it 50 to 100 feet or 15 to 30 meters away. Then, under the hand of the command module pilot, the spacecraft rotated 180 degrees facing the S-4B stage and its exposed lunar module. The pilot guided the 30-ton command and service module slowly into docking with the LM's drogue, the funnel-like receiver. Once capture was confirmed, Pyrotechnics released the LM from the adapter panels. The combined spacecraft then carefully pulled away. Now, the S-4B was alone. Its payload gone, it was reduced to a silvery, 60-foot-long shell with no mission except what controllers asked of it. On Apollo 11 and Apollo 12, the S-4B stages were left to drift into solar orbit. But starting with Apollo 13, NASA scientists had a new idea. Turn a spent rocket stage into a seismic calibration tool. The passive seismic experiments deployed on the lunar surface needed strong, controlled vibrations to measure wave travel through the moon and nothing provided that quite like an empty rocket stage slamming into it. Using small auxiliary propulsion system thrusters, controllers steered the abandoned S-4B toward the moon. The goal was not random impact, it was deliberate, targeted. Each collision site was chosen to be within about 47 to 125 miles, or 75 to 200 kilometers, of a seismic station, close enough to provide a strong signal, but not so close as to damage equipment. When Apollo 13's S-4B struck the far side, it hit at about 1.6 miles per second, or 2.5 kilometers per second, releasing the energy equivalent of 11 tons of TNT. The Apollo 12 seismometer recorded the vibrations for over three hours. The moon rang, not because it was hollow, but because its surface was fragmented, dry, and lacked the water or molten material that would normally dampen seismic waves. Later missions repeated this. Apollo 14, 15, 16, and 17 each sent their S-4Bs into controlled lunar impacts. These events revealed the structure of the Moon's crust and mantle, giving scientists insights into its depth, layering, and possible molten core. What began as a throwaway stage became one of the most significant seismic experiments in planetary science. The S-4B was a triumph of engineering. 
Its restartable J-2 engine proved reliable across every lunar mission. Only one test flight, Apollo 6, ever saw a restart failure. Its instrument unit provided rock-solid guidance to the most valuable payload humanity had ever launched. But its legacy lies not only in propulsion. It became a perfect example of Apollo ingenuity, rethinking waste as opportunity. A stage built to be discarded was instead transformed into a scientific probe of the moon's hidden interior. The Saturn V as a whole was many things. A towering factory of thrust, a guiding arrow to the moon. But in the S-4B, we see the program's spirit distilled. It demanded perfection. It enabled delicate astronaut maneuvers. And at the end of its useful mission, it gave itself wholly to science sacrificing in a flash of kinetic energy to deepen our knowledge. The S-4B was not forgotten. It was reborn as a seismic hammer, a tool of discovery, a reminder that even discarded machines can serve knowledge. In its thundering impacts, the moon revealed its secrets. And decades later, those vibrations still echo in everything we know about lunar geology.